It is a word we are hearing a lot of these days, but it is a word not easily defined, the metaverse, which in simple terms is a 3D model of the internet. By using VR or virtual reality, we can create all kinds of new worlds without leaving your own neighborhood or your own city or state. Recently, I visited the Atlanta headquarters of Exploring Inc., where digital technology reigns supreme. When you and I are talking about the metaverse, what exactly does that mean to someone who's sitting at home going, I don't know what the metaverse is? You know, that's a good question. I think everybody has their own definition of what the metaverse is. So we had to formulate ours. And I think that's where you bring in virtual reality, three-dimensional models on your screen, on your cell phone, and be able to have those emotional connections in a VR space or in a 2D space. So in the short term, you're all set to go in Cobb County where people can come out and experience these games which are incredibly real and alarming, quite frankly. I love that, you know, and that's the whole idea. Bring out the emotion and make it an experience. It's not an arcade. It really is something that is unusual and unique that we have multiple people in an environment, free walking. So you're really yourself inside of an immersive environment. It's very incredible. So it's more than just games, though. I mean, the potential here is to be able to buy automobiles, buy clothes. I mean, everything in our lives can be touched by the metaverse and probably will in the decades to come. I think that's a great point, and I think that's why there's so much potential in this environment. I mean, we're already working in education, we're working in training, so we're working with companies like Abbott and Emory University doing training and education for students. It's really quite amazing to see all these markets starting to develop. Yeah. So education would be impacted by, by which way? Let's say you're taking a history class. You could meet Julius Caesar. Uh, you could meet Winston Churchill and talk about 1939. It's just your imagination. But when you're immersed inside of an environment, you remember things so much more. In fact, the statistics tell us it's about four times more that you're going to remember in a VR environment with the glasses on than not. So yeah. it's pretty empowerful. And you've got the Braves now involved in this as well. Well, that's right. You know, you think about where virtual reality is headed in Atlanta. The Braves started Digital Truest Park. And so now you can go behind the scenes, you can actually tour the clubhouse, you can meet the players, you can get immersed in the Braves history. There can be rewards that you get in terms of the seating and what you experience at the stadium. So now they're having an all immersive experience. And we're gonna see more and more of that with attractions here, I think like the College Football Hall of Fame, the aquarium, a way to get people behind the scenes. Well, the growth of this is, you know, mind boggling, it truly is. Yeah, it is. I mean, you have lots of great companies here like Exploring Digital that are starting the virtual reality escape room, but there are also companies out there like Vestigo that are creating experiences for leadership teams where your team can literally climb Mount Everest, cross the crevasses, and actually do that as a team without having that risk of taking your entire company out in the field. Those are the kinds of things that we're going to see in the virtual world that uh, people just haven't experienced today. How do you think this could change potentially the financial world as well? I think it's going to have a huge impact. Atlanta is already a big financial technology center right now, and I think that we can be one of the leaders here in the metaverse and the megaverse, as you've seen here on site, and that's going to have a huge impact. More jobs, more dollars to the city, other ways that we can grow revenue in Atlanta, and it's where we're becoming a leader, Jeff, where we weren't before. It used to be Silicon Valley and, and what's happening in New York City, but now Atlanta is really becoming a hub. Well, you got here in the late 1970s, could you have imagined that all of these years later, 45 years later or so, that you would be immersed in something that would have been impossible to even comprehend in your wildest imagination? Uh, absolutely not. In fact, back in 1977, we were building physical environments to keep up with the demand. Uh, and that's really, now we're building them in the virtual world. So no, I don't think I could have imagined this, but Atlanta's the right place to start it. Do you think it is like a match with you know, a, a brush fire in that once people start to see this in a very small snippet, whether it's a game or, you know, that it, that it will lend itself to being more practical to everybody. That's a great point because I think once you experience this immersive technology and being in VR, it actually does open up your mind to what could be and that will keep things growing and growing and growing and people will want to do it. I think right now they're not used to it. They don't know it. They don't know yeah. what to experience and what to expect. And so far the, the response has been overwhelming and it's really fascinating to see what's going to happen. You can try the virtual escape room at the Sky Zone in Roswell and soon to be at Stars and Strikes.